accounting is just a mess for so many reasons. Like you can't even do it perfectly, even if you tried. Exactly. You know what might surprise a lot of listeners is that food labels can be up to 20% inaccurate. Like that's huge. I mean, if something's a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. you're talking, it could be 80 or 120. Like it, that's a big mm-hmm. difference. And then not to mention human error. I mean, it's like you know, we like to, you know, do our math as runners, but there's still a degree of human error when you're inputting these things or like, you know, you're not ever going to measure everything perfectly. And if you did, you're spending so much time doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and on the other side too, calories out. So how many calories do I burn in a mile? Yeah, exactly. And you know what, like you could have the fanciest watch because I know we all do. And it's going to tell you about how many calories you burned, but it's different. Like there are days that I run pushing a double stroller and there's not a setting on my Garmin for that yet. (laughs) Know that I'm pushing, you know, 40 pounds of weight with me or, you know, there's just so many degrees that the watch can't tell you, or even just like simple movement throughout the day. It doesn't know everything or your metabolism, your genetics. It doesn't know all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what's a better guideline then? So if we can't count calories, what do we count? How do we do this? (laughs) (laughs) What's the big secret? Um, You know, there really isn't a, a great secret. There's not a perfect answer here. It's what my approach is, is fueling your training right, you know, looking at pre and post nutrition, looking at the amount of carbohydrates and protein we need based on our level of training. And then it's meshing that with listening to your body and eating when we're hungry. And what might surprise you listening and responding to those cravings, you know, if you are craving more carbohydrates, there's a reason for that. And it's because your body Mm -hmm. needs that type of energy. And I find so many runners want to suppress that, or we get mad that we're hungry, or we get mad that we're craving sugar, you know, how do I stop these sugar cravings? Well, you probably need to eat some carbohydrates is what that really means. So it is Mm -hmm. striking that balance for runners of, you know, looking at this from a sports nutrition science aspect, but then also looking at it from an intuitive eating and kind of, I like to think of it as like a Venn diagram, like kind of crossing those two over and that's where we meet in the middle. Okay. Okay. This is the good stuff. This is, this is why I wanted you here to really (laughs) dive deep into this because listening to your body is a phrase that has bugged me forever (laughs) because, you know, your body has a very limited vocabulary. You know, it doesn't have a lot of words. It's like a toddler, you know, it's trying to keep us alive. It's not trying to get us a better marathon time. So, you know, how do we listen to our body when it doesn't always have the same goals as we do? <laughs> I know that is, it's, it's really hard for runners. And that's, I had a post on my Instagram, which I know Claire had noted at one point in our conversations that I, I talk about when to not listen to your body, because I think that mm-hmm. just is important. You know, I'll cover both of these things here briefly, but you know, let's start with when to not listen to our body, because I think that, like I said, that's important for runners. And I'm not saying push through no pain, no gain, you know, um, my husband's in the Marine Corps. So they love that saying pain is weak <laughs> in the body, you know, it's all over all their shirts. And, you know, yes, there might be like an ounce of truth to that. But if something is painful, that's a signal to stop. But from a nutrition standpoint, you know, we need to look at this as, you know, we need to eat before we run, even if we're not hungry, we need to eat after we run even if you're not hungry, like, and this is what Claire is talking about when she says, you know, when we don't have the same goals as our body, I guarantee you, you're probably not hungry when you wake up for that run at 5am, but you still should eat something before, or you finish that 13 mile long run in the heat of the summer and you have absolutely no appetite. You should still eat immediately after that run to get those recovery benefits. And so those are the most important things, um, you know, really focusing on that sports nutrition aspect here. But It is good to listen to your body in other senses too, where like I had noted earlier, you know, if you're craving carbohydrates, respond to that. There's a reason if you're hungry, even if you just ate lunch, like I've been there, I'm still there. Like you finish your meal and it's like an hour later and you want to say, there's no way I can be hungry. I just ate, but there's a reason your body needs that fuel. So listening to your body in that sense is going to pay dividends in your training. Mm 